In this episode, we'll talk about logging stills in Lightroom for use on blogs, videos, and even books. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace, and as you know, Exploring Photography is brought to you by Adorama. It is the camera store that has everything for photographers, including video gear, computers, external hard drives, and all kinds of stuff. So check it out at adorama.com. Well, in this episode, uh, or sort of a continuation of what I'm doing to prepare for a world uh, a trip all around the world for a few years, and I talked about the gear I uh, was going to be using and also updating GPS data in Lightroom. In this episode, we're going to talk specifically about logging still photos. And so the work that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be publishing a lot of images on my blog, Spontaneous World, as well as I'm writing some photography books. So I have to make sure that my images are prepared for those books. And of course, I'm going to be making more exploring photography videos. And so a lot of those stills have to be prepared for video as well. And I need to be able to do that very, very quickly. So I want to go into Lightroom. I want to be able to uh, update the metadata, tag photos, and then use uh, export presets and publish folders to do all of the work for me automatically. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode and we're going to do a lot of stuff very very quickly So we're going to jump into Lightroom. I'm going to show you a few tricks, but before we do that check out these contests by Adorama All right Well now we are in Lightroom 5 and I'm going to talk to you about preparing images logging them and preparing them for three different things one Using it in blogs specifically WordPress blogs The second thing we're going to talk about with these images here is getting them ready for video and then third, we want to talk about getting them over to books, specifically placing them in InDesign. Now, normally we're, we talk about things like uh, going through your images. This is, these are the images I shot uh, a couple weeks ago as the uh, images for the GPS coordinates. Well, normally we would go through here and we would select the images we want to use uh, in our publications and stuff. So I'd go in here and I'd perhaps pick this image here, press the P button, to flag that as pick, I'd go through here and say, oh, you know what, that's a pretty cool picture, and I'll pick that. And so I would have two choices. So we're going to sort of skip over that. But I've got these two images that we're going to work with today. And I can go in here to the attribute tag and say, just show me the ones that are flagged. And there we go. We've got this silver stream kind of thing here in this coffee shop. What I want to do is talk about this little quaint coffee shop in Phoenix. Uh, and so we've got this little coffee house out front. We've got this sort of out back. This is a little uh, camper that you can actually, uh, in the nicer parts of the year, it opens up and you can actually get coffee there and eat outside. It's really sort of a cool little coffee shop uh, front and back kind of a deal. So what I want to do is talk about that. So what we want to do is create our featured image. I'm going to make this the coffee uh, front of this. And so uh, let me show you what our blog looks like. So Spontaneous World is the blog that Lex and I have created for uh, sort of cataloging our adventures around the world. And so you can see this is a standard WordPress blog with a nice template. We've got featured images that are used in uh, the top bar here that scroll through so you can sort of see what's going on with different um, uh, articles here. And now if I go into the actual blog, you'll see those same images show up on uh, as featured images. And if I go into one of the articles itself, you'll see again we've got this big banner across the top and then if I go down here, we've got some small thumbnails that if you click, you'll see that they pop up. This is all standard WordPress stuff that you've seen a million times before. Or we can also go into like this right here, this backpack Jenga article that Lex wrote. And you can see that this is an actual image that's in the, uh, the article itself. So it's not in a, a gallery, it's just placed there. So we want to make sure that we've got these all prepared so we can upload them to our blog and they show up correctly. Now the other thing, this uh, image at the top, if we resize the blog, it's resized as well. It's part of the uh, template that we have. So this one's going to be a pretty big image, so large screens will have a nice full image as well. So now that we know how these are going to be used, let's zip over to Lightroom and show you how easy it is to prepare these. So this coffee uh, image right here, this is what I want to use for my featured image. So what I want to do is go to the develop module, and then I'm going to click on the crop tool, and this featured image needs to be a 16 by 6 aspect ratio, really wide. And to do that, uh, over here on the aspect ratio, you can use as shot. And that's if you go in here and start cropping that, it's going to keep that same aspect ratio. Or you can use a custom aspect ratio. And you can see that I have a 16 by 6 custom aspect ratio. How do I create that? Super easy. 
you can just go here and click enter custom. And I'm going to say, I'm going to make one up here. So I'm going to call it five by, I don't know, uh, 12, sort of a weird one. But there you go, a five by 12 aspect ratio. And now when I click this little scrolly here, you can see that five by 12 is part of my custom aspect ratios. Lightroom will store up to five of these. So when you enter the sixth one, the first aspect ratio that you created is gonna fall off. It'll store up to five of those. So I wanna use 16 by six. That's the aspect ratio that our blog uses. So I've got this here. I will crop this in just a bit. I'm gonna straighten it out just a hair, bring that over and yeah, I like it. I'm going to go with that. Hit enter. And now I have a nice cropped image that can be used as a featured image. Let's go back to the library module. I'll hit G to go back there. Now we've got this image here. This is of that sort of silver stream. Notice on the right hand side under metadata, I have these captions. And so if you go, you've got all these different uh, EXIF and EXIF and IPTC. There's one that's called large caption and it allows you a really large space to write captions. And so I've already written in here, Silverstream Coffee Shop in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, you'll see this comes into play quite a bit as we go through this. I'll zip over here. I've also entered in this coffee image here, Coffee Shop in Phoenix. All right, let's see how all of this uh, comes together. The key to all of these things are custom exports. And you can do, a, you can export something, a uh, custom preset, I'm sorry, a custom preset. You can create a custom preset extremely easily. So all we're gonna do here is we are going to create a fake preset just so you can see how it's used. And then I'll show you the ones that I've already created. So what we'll do here is we're gonna grab an image, then go to file, export, click. And then we'll have this export one file. We have this little uh, dialogue here that you've probably seen a million times. We wanna export this to a hard drive. And we're gonna say we wanna export this to a specific folder. We're gonna put this in a folder called fake blog. And then what I want to do is I want this image to be a JPEG image, quality of 80, sRGB, because it's gonna be used on screens. And uh, we're gonna type in, let's say uh, 800 pixels wide. The resolution is good. We're gonna sharpen this for the screen. And we're gonna use all metadata except the location info. Um, and you can create anything you want here. So I'm just gonna use those as my starting point. And then after the import, I'm going to show this in Finder. Now, what I can do is I have all of my settings created and normally you would just click export, but I don't wanna to have to create these over and over and over again. So what I'll do on the left hand side here, you'll see there are presets that are created. I'm going to add a preset. And so this preset is going to be called, uh, let's call it a uh, 800 pixel um, image. You can create whatever you want. And then in the folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called fake blog. And this is really cool because, and I'm gonna say create here. Now you can have this, uh, this export that's already set up. So I'm gonna click cancel here. In the future, if I wanna export one or 10 or a million files, all I have to do now is go file, export with preset, 800 pixel image. Now if I click that, it's going to use all of the settings that we've already created, uh, the folder name, um, the image size, all the sharpening, everything's there. If I hit space, you'll see this is an 800 pixel wide image and it's all set up in our folder called fake blog. All right, so that's how you create a custom preset. So what I wanna do now is show you how you can uh, export these. So I'm gonna say export spontaneous world, 1000 pixels normal. And it's gonna say where, cause I've created this so it'll ask me where. So I'm gonna create this on the desktop, create a new folder and called temp blog. So it's a temporary blog file. Say open and okay. It exports that. And uh, there it is, 1000 pixels wide, ready to go for the blog. Now the other thing I wanna do is export this guy here, this coffee. So if I say export with preset, I've already set up a 1600 pixel wide featured image. So I'll click that. And it's already uh, set up to be the exact size I want. Same folder. I'll click export. That's all done. It's gonna zip through this file really quickly. And you can see on this one that I've actually had it renamed to feature image. And if I click that, you can see it's all set up as well. Now, if we zip over to, uh, light, uh, to um, our spontaneous blog, um, blog, I can create a new post. And what I'll do is I'm going to add media. And what I'll do is I'll upload a file. 
I'll select the file I want to upload. It's on my desktop called temp blog. And here's my first image. This is the image of the camper. If I click choose, there it goes. Notice over here in the title, Silver Gulf Stream shows up. And in the description, Silver Stream Coffee Shop in Phoenix, Arizona shows up. Where did these come from? Well, if we go back over to Lightroom, you will see that in my uh, metadata here, if I say quick describe, you can see that I have a title, Silver Gulf Stream, caption, Silver Gulf Stream in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and that matches that. It's pretty awesome. Then I can start using those in my, um, in my blog. I'm not gonna create this post, but you can see that's how you set things up for a blog. It's very, very easy and quick. All right, now let's talk about getting things exported for video. Now this is a little bit different. I'm gonna show all of the different images here. For video and for books, one of the differences is instead of exporting once, you might wanna export something and then have to update it over and over again, maybe uh, crop it a little bit differently, update the metadata, perhaps do some different develop presets. It's not like you're uh, editing it once and being done. You might have to tweak it a little bit. And uh, for that, you might wanna have a folder that automatically is updated with all the images that you use. And generally, these images are used over a long period of time. So if you have to go back and edit a video or maybe go back and edit a video, um, just parts of that to use in a new project, you want all of those raw uh, files to still be available. So unlike a blog where you just upload it to the internet and then you delete them off your hard drive, these you wanna sort of hang around for a while. So what I've done is on my uh, video drive, I have actually created a, um, a, a, a folder here called uh, videos. And then up here we have a folder called ADTV stills. Those are Adorama TV stills. And you'll see that it's totally empty. I've just created that as a placeholder um, so we can create this video. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is how do you take these video images, these stills images that are gonna be used in video and update a folder over and over? Well, the, the key to that is something called Publish Services. These are very, very similar to export presets. The difference is they're live. So as you update folders and images, um, it will actually tell you, hey, your folder on your hard drive is out of sync with the images in Lightroom. So let's take a look. What we're gonna do here is on the right, we're gonna click this little plus button, and we are going to go to the Publishing Manager. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new service. And this is gonna be hard drive. And then the name for this is ADTV Video Stills. So we'll create that. All right, now we have this description, ADTV Video Stills. And what I wanna do is export these to, not the desktop, I don't wanna do that. I want to go and choose a folder on my video drive here. And we wanna to go to our videos. ADTV stills. That's where we want these to go. So now that we have those, we're going to leave the, the names normal. We're going to go here and we're going to have these export as JPEG files. We want to crank these up so they're pretty high quality. So we'll have them about 80. That seems to work just fine. sRGB is per perfect for this. We want to resize these. We're going to resize the long edge. And what we want to do is normally our videos are 1080. So we'll say 1080 as the height of our image. And we're gonna sharpen these for screen. We're gonna leave all the metadata in there and that's good. So what we'll do is we'll save that. Now what I can do is notice we have this little folder here called ADTV stills. And I can go in here and grab a few of the images. So we'll take this, we'll take this and we'll just drag it over to ADTV stills. Now, if I click on this, you'll see that there are three images that need to be published. And when I click publish, what's happening is this is the same thing as exporting an image. It's gonna apply all of those settings that we created, the image sizes, uh, custom names, or whatever you need to do. And it's storing those, we'll go over here to the finder, it's storing those in the folder that you set up. So here they are. So we have this image here, we have this image here, we have this image here. Now watch what happens. If I go in, let's say to this image, and I, uh, we're gonna go to the develop module and I'll make it, let's say black and white. Fine, that's cool. And now, when we go back to our ADTV stills, notice this says modify photo to republish. 
So it knows that we've modified something on our Lightroom catalog that's out of sync with the folder that we've created. If I click publish, it's going to overwrite that file in the folder with the new file. And so now if we go back over to this folder, we can see that there it is. It's a black and white image now. Now the beauty of that is if you're editing in Premiere, uh, what will happen is it will automatically pull the most recent image. And so if you have one person that's editing images and another person that's editing video, you don't have to worry about getting new assets over and over again. As long as you're both pointing to the same hard drive, everything stays in sync. And that's the beauty of published folders uh, and published services here. Now I'm going to show you one more thing really, really quickly. We're going to use the same strategy for updating books. So if I go into InDesign, you'll see that I've created this little uh, frame here. And it doesn't matter if you know InDesign or not. This is just an image placeholder. And what this will do is it will automatically pull metadata from our image and create a caption. So check this out. What we're going to do here is we are going to go back to our develop module uh, in our library module here. And we will go to our uh, most recent, we'll go to our, our, there we go. We've got this guy right here. So this is our uh, images that we shot downtown. And I'm going to go down to our describe here our large caption, and I'm going to say Skull Lady in Phoenix. There we go. So I've got that, and what I will do here now is I'm just going to drag this to my little published folder here called On The Go, and notice that shows up. I will click Publish. Now watch what's going to happen here. This uh, photo here is going to be published with the settings that I created. And if I go to InDesign, I will click my little Photoshop file here, drag it in. And notice Skull Lady in Phoenix shows up. And the way that that happened is in InDesign, there's something that's called Object. And then we can do Captions. And you can do Caption Setup. And you can tell it what to pull from. We've told it to pull from a description. Once I have that set up, then it will go to, uh, this will automatically pull that from the image itself. So InDesign's got some really cool features. The bottom line is, as you're logging images, think of these different things, export presets and published services, as ways to automate what you're doing. So it doesn't matter where, uh, where these are going, if it's going to a book, going to a blog, going to a video, you can create presets or published services that automate everything for you and keep everything in sync. It's really awesome, so dig in and try some of these things yourself. All right, well that's a ton of stuff that we just learned in Lightroom. Now don't forget, if you uh, don't know some of the things we talked about, you can always go to the Adorama Learning Center. There are a ton of videos and articles all about Lightroom and Photoshop and all kinds of things related to photography, so check it out. It's the Adorama Learning Center. And don't forget that you can subscribe to Adorama TV. You can click right here on the subscribe button and you won't miss a single episode. It's totally free, so you should do it. So click the button right now and subscribe so you won't miss a single thing. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I'll see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.